Hello, my name is Stefan Dullauer. I'm product manager for Penta Sydmo. And with this video, I'd like to show you the ease of maintenance of our single seat valve range SVP Basic. So let's start. I've brought the changeover valve version as well as the shutoff version. And uh, you will see everything you can do in regards of maintenance with these valves uh, within the next minutes. So, yeah. Let's start with that one, because most of the things I can show you, you will see here. So, pull that over. So we have a product side seal kit, we have an actuator side seal kit. But for now, uh, we're just focusing on the product side. It is a normally closed valve, so make sure you have uh, auxiliary air with you to make sure um, yeah, the valve is not jumping out in your face uh, when you open the clamp. So, valve is open, then we can take a 70 mm wrench and open the upper clamp here. Okay. Put the clamp to the side and then pull and then the inside itself is standing on the workbench. Put that to the side but we'll need it later again. So then remove the air, air away, then yeah, put it sideways and then you can easily click out this fast coupling. So put that apart here, try to organize that. The disc, the actuator. We don't need the actuator at this time. So when you deal with the changeover valve, do not forget the seals which are between the two housing parts. So yeah, Hopefully, in regards of maintenance, um, the, the piping planner has considered a losable connection somewhere. Otherwise, it will be quite hard. So, yeah. Let's open that again with the 17 mil wrench. Clamp to the side. Pull the housing, put that to the side. So we'll see that ring here. Uh, with another two seals. Then to the side, then let's check if we have the right seal kit. Let's open that. First you'll find a drawing uh, with some descriptions where uh, which part goes on which position. So easy. Then what's in every seal kit? are the right lubricant, so make sure uh, you're using that one and nothing else, especially nothing uh, mineral oil or petroleum based that would swell the EPDM seals. So, and then, yeah, we bring everything in the right order. So we have the profile seal here, we have the, the guide here. Um, these three O-rings are the same. One here, two here, then the two seals left over are for the disc and then we have a little helping uh, rail for the RSC mounting. Okay, so this is the easiest. Just exchange them. Done. Then we take the cap. So yeah, when your fingers are not too oily, uh, rub here and then go with the fingernail a little bit under and you get them easy out. So, and while we have that part in our hands, let's just put the other one in. That's done. And then take this one. So that's the same, same procedure. Yeah, just make sure your hands are not super oily. O-ring. Yep, yeah, come on, here. One. Two, that's it. So then the disc is the last part. 
So therefore we need this tool and now really serious. So when you work with that tool, make sure you're not uh, hurting yourself. So especially do not uh, lift up the disc and then try to work against your body or something. Um, have the disc on the bench and then try to work away from yourself and uh, keep the fingers uh, behind these shoulders here and then uh, use your thumb as a guide, pierce in directly in the middle and then push in the front. And as you see, nobody should be here in that area, otherwise, yeah, he would be in trouble. So the o-ring here, then the profile seal, uh, same procedure, push in and then uh, do that a couple of times um, until the o-ring breaks. So when you, when you look at the center, go a bit outside um, on both sides, so left and right, and push in. And eventually it's coming out and uh, yeah. I know it's a little bit harder as the o-ring, uh, but please also here make sure you're not hitting the metal, the metal parts of the disc. Don't scratch it. So yeah, almost done here. There we go. So we have it. So yeah, mounting is way more easier as um, removing it. For the radial seal, take a little bit of a lubricant, but not too much because uh, if you fill the groove and the seal here in the backside up, you may get the problem that the seal is popping out. So you don't want that. So for, for good performance in the process, Make sure, yeah, you're not creating issues with the maintenance. And then take the rail, it's part of every seal kit. And then uh, push it in the middle and then on four sides in. So. Yeah, and then roll it a bit around so that's assured that everything is in the right position here. For the o-ring, also take a little bit of a lubricant here, uh, wrap it around, so yeah. <clears throat> okay, then put it in here. in here so four sides the same procedure and then yeah so also make sure it's uniformly mounted so when we have the disc in our hand yeah put that to the side uh, we can already bring that back in in the right order so the cap then the seal, so a little bit of lubricant here on this, that side uh, is recommended. Push that down. Um, here there's also a right way to do it. There's a little yeah, shoulder here which has to go behind the seal. So push that down and then yeah, we put that now back into the actuator. So we have the fast coupling. Slide that in here and then up. So that's it. Then we can stand it up. Pull it. If that's not working, then lay it back. That's it. So yeah, don't forget the housing. The ring 
just push it down in the upper side of the housing. So the clamp. So yeah, push it here a bit with your fingers so that you're not losing the thread and the screw on top of it. At this point a torque meter is required, so 8 Newton meter torque is uh, the right value for that connection. And then when you hear the click, then it's at the right position. So yeah, remember we have a normally closed valve, so we need air for the mounting in the housing. Air here. Then, yeah, push it down. Yeah, that's it. So the second clamp, same procedure. Make sure it's correct in the sit. So eight newton meter again. So when you hear the click, that's it. Remove the air. And that's done fast and easy. So we're ready with the changeover. So let's have a closer look to the shutoff. So I'll, you'll see the difference. And here we'll also have then a closer look to the actuator maintenance. So the one main difference, so this is now a normally open version. So it's the opposite side around with the air. So yeah. Opening the clamp without air, wrench, 70 mil, and then pull it out. So, and then, yeah, when you want to remove the disc now, make sure the blue guiding part uh, is uh, pushed down. If it's not pushed down by itself, um, take a screwdriver, just give it a little bit of a push on the back. And then uh, through the lantern you see the orientation of the fast coupling. So you can, you can push that up. So when that's too difficult, um, there's a second way to do it. Um, in this case, um, you can use air, so then uh, the coupling part is coming further out. Uh, but then make sure uh, you're not uh, touching inside here, because when you accidentally uh, lose the air, then your hands are clamped. So that's uh, something you definitely do not want to have. So then pull it out. Pull it back in. That's as easy as it can be. So yeah, I promised to also to show you the actuator side maintenance. Therefore, we don't do not need that right now. Let's remove the air again. Yeah, we need the right seal kit. So yeah, we have the actuator side seal kit here. Um, yeah, look at the difference. So uh, we have here the version for proximity switches or for. Uh, without feedback there is a, a seal kit and then uh, there is another seal kit for uh, actuator side for the version with control heads. So, yeah, let's put that all to the side so we do not get confused. So that's the seal kit we need now. And then yeah, you need to remove that screw and that screw. So you can do that in a vise. If you do it, um, make sure you have aluminium protection. But what's uh, way easier is, uh, yeah, is a tool we are offering, uh, just um, an easy clamping tool. 
So yeah, just set that in and then pull the lever down and so it's clamped and then you can work at the actuator uh, in every direction. So that makes it really easy. So then for the upper part you need a 36 mil wrench. So after a few turns you should be normally able to do that by hand. That's it. <clears throat> and then the other side around. So we need these, uh, this, hook, this hook wrench here. Push it down. Yeah, here the metal thread can be a little bit more tighter. So most of the in most of the cases you need the the wrench until the end. Let's try it. Yeah, that's working. Yeah, and then we can put that to the side. We don't need it actually. So we just need these two parts and the seal kit. Let's have a look. So there. There's another drawing in the description which seals goes where. So, and then here these parts. So lubricant again. Yeah, use the one out of the seal kit. Uh, that prevents trouble for sure. So then, then we have this part. And then when you have a few seals, so uh, we have on both sides, upper and lower. So uh, like this seal, like the O-ring, like this O-ring and uh, the guide is on this side. So an advantage of this setup is you can throw that right away because we have that part new. So we just have to put these o-rings in. This side, this side, and this side. That's done. Then the metal part. So take a little screwdriver for for the guide you will find in here. Yeah. And then pliers. Oh, wait a second. And then just pull that out. So and then there are three seals left. This one, this one, and one down in here, so don't forget that one. Oh. Uh, yeah, let's start with that one. So, yeah, as long as your fingers, as easy it will be. To do it from that side uh, but you can also try to push it in from from the other side for me it seems to be easier that way then the o-ring in the groove up here then the outer side so the guide squeeze it together and then push it in and then when it's uh, right positioned you will notice a click. So that's it. So then we can pull our tool back in. Yeah, make sure you put it on, on the right side. So in this case, uh, it's a normally closed version um, and it usually goes to the to this side uh, with the smaller um, thread on top of the spindle. Uh, we need a little bit of lubricant, especially inside. Yeah, you can also put a little bit on the outside, but as this is a plastic part, it doesn't matter that much. Then throw that in. And then use the wrench at the point. It's too hard to do it by hand.
So hand tied is, is good enough. Yeah. Do not over tighten it. So the other side is left. So that comes together with the fast coupling. Also lubricant, don't forget that. And especially here on the on the thread, it's very important. Here and here. And So hand tied is here also good enough. Do not treat the part with the hammer. It's really not necessary. So back. So actuator side is done. So we can pull the product side back up front. So as I said, if you look through the lantern, you see the orientation of the of the fast coupling. So you find that almost. So that's it. Push that up. So you don't need air in this in this case. Then take the housing. So So make sure you're also not over tightening the clamp. So the torque meter, eight newton meter. I already said that I think. So that's it. <coughs> so I think that's all I can show you. So I hopefully you believe now maintenance is fast and easy with the SVP basic range. If there are any questions left, um, you can get always in contact uh, with our sales team or even better, our service team. So they will be more happy to answer more questions or may we have the chance to talk directly. And uh, yeah, if there are more information needed, please also check also the website, also the YouTube channel. So there's more information available for the SVP basic, uh, but also about other products. So then, yeah, there's nothing left as to say thank you for your attention and see you next time. Thank you.